In today's demo, we'll see how we can use IBM Process Mining to create a representation of our process based on the data generated by our systems. We'll see how we can improve the lack of visibility of our processes by identifying bottlenecks and opportunities of automation within it and using the analytics view to monitor and analyze our process. We'll also see how we can use IBM Process Mining to discover business processes by generating BPMN models for documentation and business rules that define our process. To start with IBM Process Mining, we need the log data of our systems. So the log data, it's the data that it's automatically generated by our systems that tracks all the steps and all the activities that are happening within the system and of the details of it. What we can do is export that log data, and after doing some processing of the data, we can generate a CSV file, which is going to look like the one we're seeing right now, that we can use and then upload into IBM Process Mining to create a virtual twin of our process. So if we switch over to the actual tool, and after uploading the CSV file and doing some mapping that is required, this is what we're going to automatically generate or what IBM Process Mining is going to give. What we're seeing right now is the actual flow of our process. Each of the boxes is going to represent the activities of our process. The way the model view works is based on a color scale. We're going to have multiple options to start analyzing our processes, starting with the frequency view, which is what we're seeing right now, uh, to identify the most common activities of our process, which might be a good opportunity to automate or improve those steps since they're happening so many times. Like in this example, uh, we're going to have multiple tasks. Uh, one of them might be the view services closure or the request to create it. We're going to have other view modes available, like for example, the rework view, uh, which is going to allow us to understand the bottlenecks that are in our process that are causing some delays in the club completion of our instances, like for example, for the view services closure step. We're also going to have available the duration view and the cost view. Uh, which is going to allow us to identify the most consuming steps of, of our process in both terms of money and time. Like for this example, uh, we might want to take a look to the evaluation request step, which since it's the most expensive, so we might want to start doing some automation to reduce that cost or improve it. On a second analysis, we can use the model details uh, available in the left bar. Uh, we're going to have available two different percentages, the activity complexity and the relation complexity. Uh, we can start doing some analysis with it, like for example, if we reduce the activity complexity, what the tool is going to give us is might be the happy path of our process, which is the way we want it to work. But if we start adding both activity and relations uh, into our process, we'll see how the complexity starts to show up. We're going to start noticing some noisy paths that are happening in our processes that we might be not aware of them, but they're actually happening in some scenarios, which might cause us some deviations in our process, uh, increasing the work time, increasing the steps of our process, uh, and so on, right? So we're going to start doing some analysis with these percentages until we find uh, a perfect scenario, lab, which might be the one we saw at the beginning, which is not the actual happy path of our process. It's going to have some deviations of it, but they're still going to be handled. Another feature that we're going to have available in IBM Process Mining, it's going to be the filters. So we're going to start using the filters to create multiple scenarios of our processes or do a different analysis of a specific instances that match in a condition. So the filters might be based on that condition or based on some additional information that we added about the steps, uh, like in this example, the closure region or the closure type, or it might be uh, that we want to analyze on a specific activity, so we're going to select it, and all the instances that contain that activity are going to be filtered. So we can see the impact that a specific step in the entire process. But as you can see, we're going to have other uh, options available. So once we added the actual filter, we can see how the process is going to be uh, well, filtered, of course, and we can do the previous analysis that we were doing before uh, with the multiple views, with the frequency or the rework and so on, and have a better insight of what is happening of our process on that specific activity or that specific scenario that we just defined using the filters. Using IBM Process Mining, we can also generate a BPMN model of our process uh, in the BPMN tab. Uh, that we can easily export into our mapping tool for documentation. Uh, what this is going to do is going to allow us to reduce the amount of time that we spend doing the manual map of our processes. Uh, as we see right now, this is going to give us a, a pretty nice view of our model 
uh, of our flow and of our process, right? We can also automatically generate the business rules that define our processes and define the decisions that are made in our process for the multiple paths, which is going to give us a better understanding of how our process is behaving. So if we go there and we run the discovery decision rules. So once we run the discovery decisions rules, uh, we can go to the view rules overview and start understanding why the process is deviating from the happy path that we might find at the beginning or that we might thought our process is working that way. Uh, so we can see that we're going to have all the gateways available. And if we go in detail, it's going to give us the actual rules of why the process is deviating from those steps. And we can do the these analysis with all the all the information and so on. So the more data that we added, uh, that we add at the beginning uh, for each activity or for each step of, of our process, the better insight or the better uh, decisions we're going to get uh, with this feature. Finally, we can use the analytics view to monitor and track all of our processes. Uh, if we switch over, uh, we're going to see a dashboard that it's going to be generated automatically. So this, this one comes with the tool. And the good thing is that we're going to have available all of our processes that we have uploaded into the IBM process mining tool, and we can easily switch from one process to another. We can also create some custom dashboards in here. So this view is going to be totally customizable, but we can see like in the default one that it's automatically generated. We're going to have some widgets, like for example, the KPI summary. So we can define some KPIs in terms of time and cost to see a, how many instances are matching the, the KPIs that we define and how our process is behaving. If we want to analyze some specific variants of our process uh, and understanding how many times are happening, uh, how much is the work time and so on. And if we added some uh, additional details like closure reason and the closure type, we're going to have some graphics that are going to show us uh, what is happening with those details and so on. So, but again, these views are totally customizable, so we can start adding. So we can edit those widgets and we can start adding more or less uh, depending on the needs that uh, or the data that we want to analyze. So you can see that we can create there some pie charts based on the information, some bar charts and so on. This is going to give us a more insight and a better view to understand how our process is behaving from an analytics perspective, using the dashboards to understand what is happening there and so on.